Hey there, Mercedes here from prettywebs.com and today we're gonna to be working on a glass filter Photoshop tutorial. This one is gonna be more of an image filter. So the idea behind this would be to mimic the way a photographer would add filters or objects in front of their camera to shoot through. That way you get this interesting texture in front of your image. Well, that's kind of what I wanted to do with this one except inside of Photoshop. So let's go ahead and get started with this. First, I wanna show you the image that we're gonna be using and why this is probably not the best image for this, but I chose it because it shows you where a style like this may or may not work. Very bright areas like this. We have this area that's super blown out, probably not gonna pick up on that filter right here. That's number one. Right around here, you're not gonna get much of an effect and you're definitely not gonna get an effect when it's blown out right here. There's no information here. So it's hard for Photoshop to pick up on this. So just keep that in mind if you wanna add a filter like this to an image when you're taking the photo, pay attention to the lighting and you should be okay. Another thing for this image, I cropped this down to, let me come in here to the image size i cropped this down to 2048 by 2048 pixels and i changed the resolution to 72 because i am recording of course you wouldn't change your resolution the reason i'm letting you know what size this image is is because i want to make my pattern the exact same size as the image so the pattern is also going to be 2048 by 2048 so i'm going to go ahead and get started creating the pattern first and then I'll show you how to apply it to the image. So we'll come back to this here in a little bit, but first let's go ahead and make that pattern. I'm gonna come up here to File, New. And like I said before, we're gonna use 2048 by 2048 because that's the size of the image. We're working in RGB 8-bit, and I'm gonna go ahead and click Create. Now we're just gonna be creating a simple pattern here. This is not a regular Photoshop pattern. We can't create a pattern and then apply it inside of the uh, filter gallery. We actually have to save this out as a PSD file in order to load it back in, more like a displacement map than as a pattern itself. But we are gonna be creating the pattern here. So I'm gonna come here to the plus icon at the bottom and that's gonna add this new transparent layer. Now I'm gonna press the letter B on my keyboard. That's gonna bring me to the brush tool that's right here. And I'm gonna change the brush to just a hard round and I'll make this about 50 pixels or so. So it's about that size. I'm showing you visually because I know that an image that you're using is probably not gonna be this size exactly, 2048 by 2048. So roughly, you know, when you see it on the screen, it should be about that size. Make sure that your foreground color is black and that your opacity and your flow are at 100%. I'm gonna hold down the shift key and then just make a line across. So holding down the shift key is gonna make sure that your line stays straight. So I'm just gonna drag it across and I left some room up here because we're gonna be making a sine wave. So we'll need the space. Once you have that line created, make sure that that layer one is selected and we're gonna come up here to filter, distort and wave. I already have the settings here that I know are gonna work for this. So, and it's a very, very basic. The number of generators is one. Minimum wavelength stays all the way to the left. Maximum, all the way to the right. Same thing with amplitude. Minimum, all the way to the left. Max, all the way to the right. We'll leave the scale at 100%. Repeat edge pixel, and we're using sine. You can use triangle or even square, but I do want this more curved look right here. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, stick with sign and I'm gonna click OK. So that's gonna leave us with a sine wave that we can use to make this pattern. So now I'm gonna press Command and the letter J. That's gonna duplicate the layer that I was on. So, you know, this layer here. Now I'm gonna press the letter V on my keyboard and that's gonna bring up the Move tool. If you don't see these anchors, just make sure that Show Transform Controls is checked otherwise you won't see them uh, but they are there once i'm in the move tool i'm going to press command and the letter t for the transform tool and you'll see all of these come up here okay so i'm going to hold the shift key 
and I'm gonna press the down arrow. Holding the shift key is just gonna move my object in increments of five pixels rather than one pixel at a time. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just nudging this down using my down arrow and I'm gonna leave it uh, right around there is fine. Now that I have it where I want it, I'm gonna hit return or enter to accept my transformation and I'm gonna hold the shift option command. Just hold those keys down. So on a PC, that would be shift alt control, shift alt control or shift option command press the letter T repeatedly and this that's going to copy this all the way down make sure that I have that top layer selected hold the shift key grab the bottom that's going to grab all of them command and the letter G I'm just going to group them together and hold shift and drag them so that they cover the entire canvas so this is the pattern that we're going to be using and I'm going to save this as a PSD file so that we can load it inside of the filter gallery so I'm going to come up here to file, save as, save to my computer, and I'm just going to call this wave and save it. Click OK. Now you can make these smaller, thinner, make some thin, some thick, however you want to do this. But I'm just going to give you the general idea here. So once we have that, I'm going to come over here to our image. Make sure that that image is selected and I'm going to come up here to filter, filter gallery. Let me zoom out a little bit so we can see what we're looking at. And I'm gonna come over to the, to the folders here and I'm gonna choose distort. And I'm choosing the glass filter for this one. For the distortion, I'm gonna take that all the way up to 20. I'm gonna take my smoothness all the way up to 20. And you can see that I have uh, frosted selected. It's not doing anything because I don't have it visible. So this is what it would look like. But what I wanna do is use my own pattern. So I'm gonna come here to the little three lines and click on that and choose load texture. And I'm gonna choose wave, the one that we just created. I have some other ones here that I've made. Those will be in the lab this week. Uh, for this one right here, the wave PSD, that's gonna be a download on the blog post for this. So if you don't wanna go through the process of making all of these waves, you can just download it from the blog post. I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description. We're gonna go ahead and load that. And I'm gonna scale this down. Now I know that it's not gonna show up right here in this blown out area because the image didn't have enough information to pick up on anything there. And the same for this. There is some pattern showing up over here, but not very much and definitely not here in this area. I think I'll leave this at about 100. Actually, let's take it all the way up to 200 and let's add another one. So we'll add another glass filter there. But for this one, we'll take this down. See what that looks like. So we'll have, we'll leave this at, at 100. I just wanted to show you how you could, you know, stack these effects as well. I know you're probably distracted by the fact that you can't see her face anymore and it just looks like an abstract. But what I want you to do is just pay more attention to this area and the style that we're getting here. We can always go back and remove the effect from her face and we'll do that here in a minute. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. Of course, I wanna get her face back. So we're gonna come over here to the mask for the smart filter. I'm gonna press the letter B on the keyboard. I'll bring my brush tool, the size of my brush up a little bit. I don't want this hard edge though, so I'm gonna come back over here to a soft round brush. And I might even take my opacity and my flow down. For this one, I'm not going to though, so I'm just gonna kind of come around this area and just remove that from her face. You might even fade it out a little bit more, maybe take the opacity down. So you're getting like this sweet spot effect. And if it's a little bit too much, you can always come back in here to the uh, gallery, remove part of it and then click OK. And this is a much simpler style. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like, share and subscribe to this channel and visit prettywebs.com for more design resources and tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching.